Well, hey guys, welcome back to episode or lesson three for SketchUp for Woodworkers. Hope you guys have been able to get a lot of use from the past two episodes on uh, this progressive project that we've been working on, which is just a simple six board bench with extensive joinery. Um, so what I'm going to do now, since this bench is pretty well done with what we want to do, there is one aspect that we haven't completed yet, and that's making the feet. So let's do that before we do the cut list, because that's going to be the big um, lesson plan of this episode is doing the cut list. So let's go ahead and highlight the leg, go into the component, and make sure that everything is highlighted and you have your dotted line halo all the way around. Now I want to make a curved, uh, like a half circle uh, on this particular leg. And I want to leave myself with about two, maybe three, let's see what three inches looks like. So I'm gonna draw a line three inches from either side and see how big that's going to be. That might be a little much, so I'm gonna undo those and do two inch guidelines. So I'm gonna click on that left side, do a two inch guideline, go to the other side, click and do another two inch guideline. And I think I like that better. Um, we'll have to see if the circle is actually going to eat into the shelf at all. And uh, we'll, we'll just kind of find that out the hard way. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to the top left hand part of the screen and um, I'm going to do a two point, actually you can do many different kinds. There's just a regular arc and there's a two point arc. A uh, two point arc is probably gonna be the easiest for this. That way I'll uh, be sure not to eat into the shelf. So I'm just gonna click on two point arc. I'm going to go over here to where the guideline is intersecting the very bottom of the leg and I'm gonna click. Now come over to the other guideline intersection and click again. Now I'm gonna drag up and you'll start seeing an arc form. And three and a half inches is kind of what it's giving me right there. So let's just drop it at three and a half. And then we're gonna push and pull that in so turn on your push-pull and just highlight that area and click and drop. So as you can see from the other leg, we had plenty of room left to be able to uh, make that curve. So we could have actually made thinner feet and gone up a little bit more if we wanted to. Now we could have taken that curve upwards even more from these two points, but if we'd have done that, the curve would start eating into uh, this guideline instead of being uh, inside of it, it would actually start feeding off into the uh, inside part of the leg and made it a really extreme semicircle, which, I mean, you can do that if you want to. It's kind of hard to do with a jigsaw, um, but, you know, to each his own, it's, I mean, we can go ahead and try that if you want. We can just undo what we just did, go back up to the two-point arc, and I'll show you what uh, a higher arc will do. So it stops, it snaps at three and a half inches. So we can go higher, and then you can start seeing the arc going into the side of the leg a little bit more. So the feet are actually going to be kind of semi-circled as well. So if I drop it at, let's just do six, and then push, pull that. You can see that's right at the bottom of the foot. So I do believe that I made that shelf six inches uh, from the very bottom. So that's like eating right at the bottom of the dado. So um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put it back the way it was and just do the three and a half. Click and click, go up to three and a half where it snaps, right there, and then fix it. Okay, so there we go. We've got our uh, bench with our curved feet and there are so much more that you could do to these legs to kind of really fancy them up if you wanted to. You can do another semicircle here and kind of meet it uh, at the dado lines uh, and really fancy those legs up and make them pretty cool looking. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of experiment on that maybe later. <laughs> okay, so like I said, we're going to do uh, the cut list. So clear your, your uh, guidelines. 
I have minus shift D, or you can go up to edit and delete guides and go back to um, just your standard view of your bench. Now, I'm going to mimic this out of the wood that you would find sort of at uh, like Home Depot and Lowe's. And typically those boards are about 11 and a quarter inches wide, eight feet tall, um, three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, and that's probably their largest pine board. And you might get some that are 10 feet tall, um, but we'll just stick with the eight because um, I doubt we'll need any more than that. So what I'm gonna do is kind of go off into, into space out here and I'm gonna get kind of a ways from the, from the bench and go to the other side of the plane area. And I'm gonna hit my rectangle tool, which is R on my keyboard, or a rectangle up here at the top. And I'm just gonna click on right around the area where the green plane line is at. And I'm just gonna drag out a random looking rectangle. Now, I can't establish the length of the board. All I can do is establish the dimensions of the end grain, which is three quarters of an inch by 11 and a quarter inches wide. So while I'm dragging this around, I'm just gonna type in 0.75 comma 11.25 and hit enter. Now I'm gonna turn on my orbit so I can zoom in. So this is the end grain of the board. So let's just drag out the length by push pulling over the center part of the ingrain and click and then just type in eight and the symbol for feet not inches and then hit enter now let's zoom back out using the orbit tool and you can see now that we have an eight foot long by eleven and a quarter inch wide plank that's three quarters of an inch thick so let's make this a component so uh, it can be our template. So we're gonna just highlight it all by clicking into it till all the um, surfaces highlight with that blue grid, okay? Hit G on your keyboard to make it a component. And I'm just gonna call this wood template one. So now we have a board template for what we would buy at Home Depot. Now, typically we're not gonna buy just one of these because one of these will not make this bench. So we need to make more. So while it's still highlighted, and if it's not, just drag and highlight. Use your move tool, which is M on my keyboard. And we're gonna click in one of the corners, or you can click on the face, it's not necessarily that important. And we're going to click and hit option to duplicate and just kind of move it out here pretty close. Now let's highlight both of them so we can do both at the same time and copy again. So click and hit option again. Now you're moving two boards at the same time, not just one, and then drop them. So now we have four boards. This should be enough to make this particular bench. It may be a little overkill actually, uh, but we'll just go with these four. So this is what we're gonna do is lay out how these boards are going to be cut on these planks. So first, a lot of people will um, just duplicate these pieces one at a time. So like they would click on the uh, bench top and then they would move it and hit option so it will duplicate and then they'll put it on the board somewhere so it will be um, laid out. However, if you're not paying attention or you get distracted or pulled away from your computer and you can't remember what exactly you laid out on your boards, sometimes if you're not paying attention, it's easy to get lost and uh, you can't remember what it is that you stuck up there. So what I do is I copy the entire project. So I'm gonna highlight this entire bench, make sure that it's blue, and I'm gonna copy the whole thing by clicking M and Option while I'm dragging, and let's just duplicate the entire bench, okay? And let's just move it over here so it's out of way of the other. I'm not going to touch this original bench now. It is going to be all its own. However, all the parts and pieces are connected since I just duplicated it. So any changes that I make to these are going to affect the original. And we may have to end up correcting a couple of things just because of the dimensions that we made this bench in. So I'm just going to zoom over to my copy. And let's start with the top. So just highlight the top, make sure that it's the only thing that's blue. Do not go into the component, just highlight it. Use your M function or move tool 
click M on your keyboard, and then just drag it off. You do not have to duplicate this. Just drag it off your, your bench, and then just drop it out here in front of these planks. Now, we need to get it into the proper orientation, which is basically looking like these planks are. Right now it's laid down flat and in a different plane, so we need to rotate it in a couple of different directions. One of those is going to have to be on the end grain. We're gonna to need to rotate it 90 degrees up this way. Um, you can do it the other way if you like, so you can see the dados, and that way you know what piece you're messing with, which we can go ahead and do. So we'll just use our rotate function, which is these double arrows right up here, or mine is Shift R. This will give me a protractor to play with. Now it's not the same protractor like what we have right up here. All this protractor does is give us angles with dotted guidelines. This actually rotates pieces or components. And you have to make sure that you are in the proper plane because right now you see that I'm in the blue plane, which if I click and establish zero, you'll see what direction it rotates it. And that's not the direction I want. I actually want to rotate it up 90 degrees on its end grain. So I gotta make sure that I'm in the green plane. And I can click anywhere on this line as long as it's green and establish zero. So click and drag out, establish zero, and then start dragging and you'll see it rotate on its end grain. Just click 90 and it's rotated up. Now you can go the opposite direction so the dados are visible, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, now I need to rotate it on its face and rotate it up in the direction that the planks are. So turn back my rotate function and now you see that we're on a red plane. When before it was laid down it was on a blue plane. Um, so I'm just going to click anywhere on this face, establish zero and turn it up to 90 again. So just uh, type in 90 and enter and it will turn it 90 degrees for you. Okay, now we're in the proper plane to do the layout. So I need to click on a corner to snap to. So this is my top, <clears throat> I zoomed in a little bit. Now this corner is going to reference to one of these corners right here. So I'm just gonna click on that corner and then start backing out and I'm gonna go to this first plank. And I'm gonna zoom in now so I can see it better. And you can kinda see it already snapped but I'm gonna snap it right to that corner and drop it. Now I'm gonna zoom back out, okay? <clears throat> now, the dimensions that we made this top <coughs> are 12, 12 inches wide. Unfortunately, the boards that you get from Home Depot are 11 and a quarter inches wide, so this top actually is too big. Now there's a couple of different things that you could do. You could make this top two separate pieces, two separate components, uh, just one copy of another, and have you a joint line right down the middle. Um, in SketchUp, you don't necessarily have to have it unless you really want to have it. For layout purposes, all you really need to know is that you have to have enough wood to join up to make this entire piece. So you're actually going to have to have wood from up here to make this one piece uh, with the wood from down here. So the easiest way is just copy this top and you can click on your move tool on this corner so you can snap it to the top corner and hit option make sure that it copies. So snap it to that top corner right there. So now we've got a duplicate copy of the bench top. This tells us that we're actually going to use this section of the board and this section of the board just to make that one top because you'll have to join them together. Now we're not going to use all of it because there's going to be about another five or so inches uh, over here all the way down the board that will not get used. So we can actually put some parts on top of this because we know that it's going to uh, be extra wood. But if you don't want to confuse yourself and you want to make sure that you have some leftover scraps, then just leave it alone uh, and do the two parts. So if we pretend that we cut this board in two so we can have two boards to, uh, to join. There's actually going to be an eighth inch saw blade gap or a kerf that's being taken out of this board. And right now these boards are butted up next to one another. So if we don't separate them with an eighth inch gap, it's not going to be accurate. So I'm gonna put my move back on that corner 
and I'm gonna click and bring it up some more and I'm just gonna type in one slash eight. Now I have an eighth inch gap, which is my saw blade curve. So let's back it out a second because I know there's something else that we did with the dimensions of this bench. Now if this was an eight foot plank and that's all you could find, unfortunately the bench is too long because we actually made this bench 48 inches. Um, on top and we would need two of these to join together uh, so that actually exceeds the limit of this plank so there's like I said a couple options you can resize this top or buy yourself a longer plank if you have access to one if you don't we're gonna have to resize this top so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna pretend that Lowe's and Home Depot doesn't have 10 foot pieces to reference from so <laughs> let's shorten it up so I'm just gonna click on this particular bench top and use my push-pull. After going into the component, and I'm gonna shorten this up, let's just say a half an inch. That should give us enough room to play with. So I'm gonna push-pull this down and type in 0.5, <clears throat> and that gives me that much to play with. Now, it also gave me a little bit more room down here, because uh, remember, we had an eighth inch kerf between these two boards. So I'm going to move this board down now. I'm gonna click out of the component and then just move it by highlighting it and using my move tool and then snapping these two corners back to place again, dropping them. Now I'm not touching them anymore. So I'm gonna grab it again and then move it up the eighth inch kerf again. Now I'm gonna back out with my orbit and just go make sure I've got plenty of room up here. So what looks like about maybe five eighths, what do I got? Seven eighths, seven eighths to play with. So that should be plenty. Now, because we changed this board top, our original now is going to be changed. So I'm gonna back out and then go take a peek at my original bench that we copied, okay? Now everything looks good here, but I only, I only changed one end. So it's probably gonna be on the other end. So I'm gonna pan over to the other end. And as you can see, it is shorter. So, you guys know that I shorten this up by half of an inch. So if I want to center this, I can either move it, move the whole bench over um, just a quarter of an inch this way, which is probably gonna be the easiest thing to do. Or you can uh, push pull this out a quarter and then go to the other side and push pull the other way and center it up that way. Um, but let's just move the bench top. So I'm just gonna highlight the bench top right here on the original use my move tool and I'm just going to reference this corner right here and drag it along the edge of the apron. So I'm going to click and just drag over just in that line zone and I'm going to type in 0.25 enter. So all I did was just move it over a quarter of an inch this way which gives me a quarter of an inch overhang uh, exceeding there and now if I pan over to the other end I've got a quarter of an inch over here and we didn't have that before so we know we did it right so because we've done this the aprons are now too long so let's shorten the aprons up by using our move tool and we'll just move the walls of the apron that we want changed so let's go into the component of the apron and I'm going to highlight this 45 degree angle in grain and I'm going to come up here and also highlight this flat section of the offset rabbit in grain so hold down your shift key and click and it will highlight that one as well. Now I'm gonna get into position that I can see better by using my orbit tool. Turn my move function back on. Now I can reference this line to this corner here, this corner to this corner, or I can reference this one to this one, or even this one to this one. They'll all snap to the direction that I want and to the position that I want. So I'm just gonna grab any one of those and click and snap. Now, it also did it over here, because it's a copy, so we don't have to worry about that one. So let's go to the other end of the bench, and zoom in to where you can see good. Now we'll have to highlight these walls, so we're just gonna click this 45, hold down the shift and click this face as well, so now this one and the 45 are now highlighted again. Use the move tool and grab the corner and snap it and now they are shortened up without having to do a whole heck of a lot to get them that way. Very, very simple to do. 
So now our bench is now resized to the appropriate length and width that we need it to be. So I'm gonna move back over. I'm gonna click out of the components. Move back over to my layout. Now because we did the changes on our original, our copy of the bench has also been altered. So we don't have to worry about that. It has now been resized appropriately. So now let's start rearranging the components again on our layout. So let's grab our aprons and move those. So I'm gonna grab, let's just grab anywhere just to move it out. Put it in front of the boards. Now this one is already laid out in a uh, appropriate direction that I only have to turn this one time. So let's turn on our rotate function, which like I said, are these double arrows up here. And just click anywhere on the face and establish zero. And then rotate up to 90 and enter. And now it is in the appropriate uh, laid out position. So I'm gonna grab this corner of the offset dado and snap it over here to this corner of the board. So grab it and I'm gonna zoom in because it's not quite snapping yet. And move a little bit, there we go, now we're there. If you have issues with snapping because the component is in your way, you might have to find yourself moving to a position that you can actually see the component as well as the corner that you need to snap to where you're not having to move across the component as you're dragging it. Uh, you're actually moving the component to the area that you need to see it. Uh, sometimes whenever the component is under you or you're sitting on top of it in relative form, uh, snapping to certain areas is very difficult, so you might have to reposition yourself in order to drag it to that corner. Sometimes zooming in will, will fix that, um, but sometimes you kind of lose your, your orientation in your mind as to where you're at. So now we've got this apron here, so let's just duplicate the apron. We can drag it sideways, and that way we'll have uh, two aprons there. So let's just duplicate by moving tool. Uh, let's just snap a corner. So press option, make sure it copies. You can kind of get a reference as to where it's at. So what I'm gonna do is snap it to the other corner of the plank, and I'm just gonna flip it, okay? Now, since I've drug it all the way over here, I want to flip this around so I can snap it to the corner of this plank. Now, in the orientation that it was in the original bench, um, the direction that I want to flip it is going to be along the blue axis because I want to flip it from the top to the bottom of the apron. Now the direction that it is right now looks like it's going to be on the green axis, but if I laid this apron back out the way it was, which is this way, the blue axis flips that direction. So I want to flip it this direction over here on the layout. So I've got to flip it along the blue axis. So we're going to right click on the component and flip along blue. All right, so that flipped it the direction that I need and I'm going to snap the offset rabbit corner to the corner of the board. All right, now that I've got two aprons on the layout, even though I copied it, it's, it's still okay. All the aprons are copies of each other anyway. So this apron that's over here on my copied bench, I'm just going to delete because I don't need it. All right, now let's turn the leg in the direction we need. I'm not even gonna drag it in front of the boards this time. I'm just gonna rotate it in the directions that I need by using the rotate function. So just highlight the board, make sure that you're on the end grain and you'll be in the blue plane so we're gonna click, establish zero, and then rotate it out 90 degrees. So type 90 and enter. And we're just gonna make copies of this leg, so when we're done, all we gotta do, do is delete that one. So turn on your move function. We need to move in a position where we can snap the inside corner here, which is this corner, uh, to the outside face of the board. So we're gonna grab that corner and just move. Oh, I didn't grab the corner. There we go, grab the corner. Now back out so you can see the boards. There they are. And position it right over the aprons there. We can zoom in. 
and then let's just snap it to the apron and then move it up an eighth of an inch for our kerf type in one slash eight and enter and there's our kerf so after you snap it to the apron you drop it and then hit it again click on it again and then move it up and then type in one slash eight and hit enter now let's duplicate this leg because it's going to be a copy so move function grab this corner and then hit option while you move it and we're gonna back out so I can see the top drag it and then zoom back in snap it and drop and then establish another eighth inch curve by moving one slash eight and enter okay now I've still got some room up here to play but uh, all the pieces that I have left are too long so that's just gonna be scrap um, so let's delete the leg down here on the copied bench because we don't need it so as you can see all we have left is the uh, shelf and it's going to go on the third um, plank now remember I said that there's going to be some leftover wood over here on uh, this plank because we're going to rip this you know to like six inches which will leave about five or so inches left over here and these uh, aprons are actually four inches wide so they will actually fit on the scrap that you're going to have on this plank um, so you're actually going to save a little bit more but you're still going to use uh, at, at minimum two pieces of, of wood um, but I typically buy three whatever I have I buy a plank more so I have some some extra screw up room so to speak so I'm gonna go into this shelf um, I'm not gonna go into the component I'm just gonna rearrange its orientation so I'm just gonna highlight it blue turn on my rotate function which is shift R for me or just click the circled arrows up there at the top make sure I'm in the red plane and I'm gonna establish zero click and go 90 enter go to the ingrain so pan into position for the ingrain so you can rotate it in the direction of the planks turn on your rotate function again make sure you're in the right plane and establish zero and turn to 90 enter and then back away and you can see we're in the right position so the dovetail um, we can use to snap but it's going to cause a little confusion because uh, we're going to <laughs> it's going to be offset let's just grab the dovetail so you can see what happens so grab the very corner of the dovetail and then back away so you can see drag it over here and then zoom in so you can see where it's snapping all right so you can see that partial partial part of the board is hidden inside the thickness of the plank and that's because we grabbed the wrong corner so you can use this to kind of help you out though it'll get you in kind of a position so snap it to the corner of the board and then grab this uh, kind of hidden corner you can see the outline but it's inside the plank and just grab it and scoot it out and it'll snap but you got to be real careful you got to stay in the red plane because you see my line where my mouse is at is dotted red but if I'm off slightly it's dotted black which means I'm not in that plane anymore I'm moving it into a, a diagonal feature and it, that's not what I want I want to go straight in line with that plane so keeping it on line with the plane of the template I can put it right on the edge in that red line and drop it and that'll ensure that all I did was move it uh, straight out instead of at a diagonal okay I'm gonna pan around here and I'm gonna look and see that I've got some wiggle room here for the width of the shelf that's good I've got some leftover above it and then this is extra and this is extra um, like I said because these aprons can fit on the scraps over here you really won't even need this one um, so you'll be buying this plank and this plank for sure and using it and then this one will be your screw up plank so to speak so let's just get rid of that one so we know how much wood we're going to need so that's a cost analysis right there um, each one of these boards is probably roughly about oh 25 30 so that's you know 30 60 90 dollars 
to build this bench. Um, 60 if you're really, really careful, okay? Now, the layout is done. What we need to do now is create a cut list. Now, unfortunately, in the free version of SketchUp, um, you can't do cut lists as far as how components are laid out. And, and when, you, when you name components in the paid version, it really helps you to understand what pieces are what because you can name them bench top, uh, leg, shelf, things of that nature, and you, it will label that for you in your cut list in the paid version. But we don't have that paid version, so we've got to do this a different way. So we need to find the dimensions of each of these pieces. Now there is a tool on this version called the dimensions tool. And I have that set up as the letter D on my keyboard for dimension. Um, or you can go up here to, let's see if it's tools and dimensions right there. Okay, so you can click that. Now, if you go to a corner of a board, it'll give you this little reference dot. Now, I wanna go to the corner of the dovetail because that's the very top or top part of the board. And I'm gonna click that point. Okay, now you can start seeing it's giving me a dimension uh, in inches. And it, and it does all the way to like 64th. So we're gonna back out so I can go all the way down here to the very end of the board. Whoop, I went too far, there we go. And click on the tip of that dovetail. Now that will lock the length of that line in place and you can drag it out so you can see what that measurement is and just drop it. Now just back out with your orbit tool and you'll see a dimension of 35 inches. Okay, so let's do the width the same way. Turn on your dimensions tool again which is D on my keyboard. Find this dot, you can use the dovetail if you want to. It won't matter this way. Click on that dot, drag it, click on the other end, click, and drag up. So the shelf, we know, is an 11 by 35. So now what I do is I go to a third party software, and mine's called Pages, or you can do this in Microsoft Word if you are using a Windows computer. So I'm gonna click on Pages. I'm going to open a blank document. And let's just name this Cut List for Six Board Bench. And we already know what the first one is, which was the Dovetail Shelf, colon and it was a three quarter inch thick by 11 inches wide by 35. Okay, make sure and put the inches in there so I know. All right, dovetail shelf, that is the start of our cut list and you would do this repetitively for each and every piece. Now this is the bench top, it's 47 and a half inches long by 12 inches wide. However, if you remember, we needed two pieces. So we're actually going to half this six inches because we're gonna have to joint them in place anyway. So um, let's go back and we'll say bench top, colon, three quarter inches by six inches by, it was 47 and a half inches. And let's go ahead and say bench leg, bench aprons. Okay. So we'll do the aprons. Click on each corner. And it's also 47 and a half and I click that corner and unfortunately I cannot drop this because I don't have the circle the little reference circle like this but it'll still tell me how long it is and I don't need to keep it there necessarily now if you're gonna make plans then yes you might want to figure out a way to get this to stay and what you can do is use the dados because there will be reference corners on either side of the dado so I can flip this dado or flip this piece 
to where the dados are visible. There we go. And then use the dimensions tool. And then I can use it that way. So it's four and a quarter inches, see? And then I can drop it. So it's four and a quarter by 47 and a half. So three quarter by four and a quarter by 47 and a half. And I need two of them, so I'm gonna put parentheses two. And then the leg is also gonna have a parentheses two. So I know they're three quarters of an inch by I'm gonna use my pan tool so I can move up, or orbit tool, rather. And turn on my dimensions again, go to this corner, make sure it's purple. You gotta make sure you're on the right endpoint. So that's 17 and a quarter, and we'll use this dado for reference here, by 11. 17 and a quarter by 11. There we go. So let's do parentheses two for them as well. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That is our cut list. You can take this directly to your shop with these measurements and start cutting everything out. So you would just wanna save this into a file and make sure you know where to find it. So that is how you create your cut list with the free version of SketchUp. Like I said, if you have the paid version, there are options available to you that references the component names that you give it, and it will tell you the dimensions that you already made. So there's less work involved, just more money to spend to get the paid version. So now that I've got those all figured out, I can take these dimensions away. I don't need them, so I can undo everything. Now, if I was gonna make plans, I wanna see about color coding all of these things. So, I can color code the original bench or I can color code the pieces. Now, to color things, there is a bucket right up here. It looks like a little paint bucket. I have that assigned to B for bucket on my keyboard. And it gives you these options and these little Crayolas or um, matte pencils, whatever you wanna call it are probably the easiest to, to pick from. You can use the color wheel if you want to, and you can play with the shading and brightness and darkness and things like that. But the pencils are pretty quick and dry to, to, to use. So I wanna do the bench top. So I'm gonna go into the component and it will color all of them at once and color it red. Now, if you didn't go into the component, I'm gonna pick another, let's just do green. I'm gonna pick another duplicate item like the leg. If I didn't go into the component and I just clicked it, it would just do that one leg. Then I would have to click this one, and this one, and this one, in order to make them all green. But if you go into the component and color just that one, it duplicates them all. A lot easier to do that way. So let's do the apron, we'll do it a uh, blue. And then, the shelf will do pink or purple. So there we go. Now we've got a color coordinated component layout of the bench. And those come in quite handy whenever you're piecing these things together in a plans, um, plans list. And I do plans separately in pages as well. Um, we can get into that on another episode or a lesson if you want to see how plans are made or at least how I make my plans. Uh, but you can let me know in the comment section down below if that's something of interest to you. But this is how you make a cut list and a layout of your uh, pieces for whatever you're making. And you can tell um, it gets pretty extensive if you have a lot of pieces to lay out. Um, and plywood is no different. Instead of laying out planks of wood like this, a piece of plywood, you would just make a four by eight sheet or a rectangle and then drag it out to three quarters of an inch thick and um, 
Start laying out your pieces that you know are going to be plywood. Make yourself another piece of plywood for half inch if you know you've got some half inch thick pieces. And same goes for the quarter inch. Color code those templates a little bit different too. So like these uh, planks of wood that I've got here, I can color code them a color of wood. So if you go into this little brick on the color uh, window that pops up, you can select a whole bunch of different textiles. And um, let's see, wood is right here at the very, very bottom. And I can color code these like that to where they look like a piece of wood. So if you have multiple thicknesses of plywood, you can color them different colors. Like this could be the three quarter, this could be the half, this could be the quarter inch. That's how you would color coordinate everything so you could keep it straight in your heads. This will also really help you in um, doing layout work for your clients because sometimes they want to see the project and how it's going to be put together. And I use this frequently with my clients. And I'm gonna run through really fast how I would present this to my client um, if I was to send them a video of this before I was able to sign this contract. So I'm gonna hide all of that because I don't need it. And I'm just gonna go into a little spiel here. Well, hey guys, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown as to what this bench that you are commissioning me to build for you, how it's going to look and how it's going to be built. Now this isn't something that you'll find off the shelf at say a furniture store because this thing is going to be built to last and you'll be able to hand it down to your children later if you decide to, um, regardless of how many times you paint it. <laughs> so let me show you real quick what it's going to uh, consist of and how it'll be built. As you can see, it is made out of six boards, including this shelf that you can put shoes or baskets or anything like that on, as well as underneath it and the distance that you have underneath this shelf is roughly about six inches and above is about six and a half inches so there's plenty of room to put some things in here if you so chose to um, I gave the circles in the legs a little bit of whimsy they can be taken out or changed up if you if you so chose um, and the legs also have a semicircle so it plays off each other now the way it's constructed each piece that intersects another has a different type of joinery system and they are very very strong because it provides a lot of glue surface area as you can see this one is dovetailed together which would keep the shelf and the leg from separating uh, hardly ever because pulling a, a part of dovetail is almost near impossible and the leg is led into the aprons with what we call a dado uh, and I'll hide the leg so you can see what it looks like there is a dado which is about a quarter of an inch deep that the leg actually fits inside and that will create rigidity of the bench from side to side movement so it won't rack. And then the offset tongue that you see right here inside the top will also provide rigidity to the apron that's tied into the leg. Uh, so this whole bench will be one big unit instead of six different pieces, it is now one. And you won't find this thing coming apart anytime soon. So I hope that this really clears up how this bench is going to be put together for you and how well it's going to to last you for future years to come so if you have any questions about this whatsoever feel free to drop me an email i would be happy to talk with you thanks a lot so just doing something like that for your clients um, really will seal the deal on you landing the contract versus somebody else because if they can actually see what their project looks like regardless of the colors uh, you could have made this all wood color if you wanted to, and it would have been fine. But clients sometimes like to see a rendering of what their project looks like and how it's going to be built and what you can give them as a craftsman. And SketchUp is a wonderful tool in order to do that. So um, I'm just going to leave it at that, and uh, maybe in the next lesson we can pick some other things to go over. Like I said, if you have any suggestions that you want me to touch on, uh, with what I have gone over so far, feel free to drop those in the comment section and um, hope to see you in the comments. Thanks a lot for your time and I will talk to you on lesson four.